going on guys? Blazing Tech and this is the one thing you need to know if you want to add a camper shell to your third gen Tacoma. Now this isn't going to be a video about why you should get a camper shell or any instructions on how to wire the third tail light. I do have a review on my Tacoma with the camper shell right there which is the ARE V series and I've also done an instructional step-by-step -step video on how to tap the rear tail light. So, this video is going to be for somebody that wants to get a camper shell but has no idea about the one big issue, which is water leaking from the back glass area. So, why don't we come over here and we'll take a better look. So, the biggest issue that we have when we add a camper shell, and there's my camper shell, is that we get water that leaks through nowhere else but right here. And you can see that it wasn't designed to be watertight and we've got this sliver of space right here. And it's really annoying because you've spent a lot of money on your camper shell and you go ahead and install it and there's literally just water pouring through that spot. And it was designed to come through here because you see that we have a lot of different drain plugs right here. So there's one, there's two, and there's a third. Something else that a lot of people don't talk about is that this panel right here is also a place where a lot of water comes through and you can see that it was designed to be that way because we've got these little channels right here and again we've got those drain plugs right here so the water is supposed and it's designed and supposed to come through this back panel but that's a really really easy fix and I'm going to tell you how to go about this it's not something perfect. I haven't been able to completely stop the leak in my truck, but it's something now where it's only a couple of drops. And that's something that I can live with and I've troubleshooted this problem many times. So essentially what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use this GE 100% waterproof silicone. And this is, I got it in a black color. It comes in clear and white as well. And this was the kind of the gold seal. So there's a couple of Torx screws that screw into the, well they're not screws, they bolt into the bed. And once you remove this, I'm going to try and compile a lot of video. I have a lot of video of me doing this. But once you remove this panel, what you're going to want to do is, you're also at the same time going to want to unclip this clip right here, you can pull this up. I'm not gonna do it on my dad's truck. But you wanna put this 100% silicone right here. You wanna build up a really, really good layer of 100% silicone right in here through this slit. Put as much as you want. I mean, you can see the daylight coming through and it's not just enough to seal it from here. You guys, I caulked underneath that plastic panel all around, even on the paint. And I've really done my best to build up these corners, as you can see. And I've run this all along here. And just like, you know, we have these issues with the camper, I'm just building up the corners. You want to make sure that you seal this entire back area. So what I did was I put a little bit on the bed itself. Then when I removed this little block piece, I also put some on the block itself. That way, when I bolted it back up to the truck and it tightened and it set, there was no possibility that any water would come through that area at all. And I completely mitigated the leak at that point. Now my thought process is, I've got this nice and I've let it sit for a while, probably about an hour, hour and a half between the layers. And I'm just going to put, put it down there and obviously the silicone is going to, it's not in its solid state so it's going to mesh and everything will sit together well. And I've also done some garage door sealers and I'm going to leave the link to that video as well. I've done garage door sealing which is basically just some rubber slips, uh, some rubber pieces, excuse me, along the rails of the bed. Nothing crazy there. Again, I'm gonna leave that link so you guys can study that on your own time. If you are considering buying a camper shell, 
because these are little things that you can't do once the shell is on. You're gonna have to deinstall it. So this is all prep work on a truck that does not have the camper shell. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you guys out. If you're considering getting a camper shell, really, really, truly do these things and you're gonna save yourself a lot of headache and heartache. Blazing Tech, and we'll catch you on the next one.